Next, let's play around with exploiting the multiple inputs and the multiple outputs of three sisters. I have made a much more complicated patch here, but it's not that bad. I've color coded things for you to follow. I'm using the noise source on the Mother 32 as my magenta or pink signal on my scope here. I've got it turned down, but there you can see my noise. Ready for me to plug into something. I've switched over to the square wave output of the Mother 32, going through the yellow channel on the mixer, yellow display on data as usual. And then I've also taken an additional oscillator output from my disting, a sawtooth wave. That's the green controls and the frap tools 321, the green trace on data. And as in the previous movie, the output of my filter is going to be the blue trace. I'm gonna put it into drone mode where the VCA is open. Right now there's nothing happening because I don't have anything patched in the inputs. And I'm in format mode, which means right now I have the three bandpass filters. I've put my resonance control back up to 12 o'clock, minimum resonance for now. We can play with that a little bit later on. And let's play around with feeding different inputs through the different chains here. For example, I enjoyed my square wave, so let's go ahead and patch that into, say, the low bandpass chain. There we go. Maybe tune it to emphasize that. One more spread. Push that lower harmonic. Nice. Now let's take this sawtooth wave coming out of the disting and put that through, uh, let's say, the high. Maybe even up an octave. As I sweep the frequencies. In here I have two parallel sweeps going on, one for the square wave low, one for the sawtooth high, which is different than mixing them together, because I can play around with how the filters line up with their fundamentals. I'll make the span more narrow so we can focus on just one of the fundamental harmonics. Now we're just down to basically one bandpass filter tuned to the same frequency. Spread them out. It sounds more like two voices in parallel than just a single voice. A little bit of envelope going on here, a little bit of longer decay. Maybe even a little bit of a tack sweep. Slower envelopes. And then, of course, I have my noise over here, so let's plug it into the center, since that's the one not used yet. I've got it turned down here, so let's draw in a note. Bring up the noise. Maybe swap around so the square wave goes through the center of the bandpass filters, and the noise just is a low rumble. A little bit less of a sweep here. Let's try a more dramatic effect. I'll increase the envelope depth and the span or the spacing between the bandpass filters. So that's one sort of effect, and you can play around with that much more than what I'm doing there. But this really becomes interesting when you switch this to crossover mode, because now we can really do a spectral crossfade between two different inputs. For example, well, let's leave the noise in. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the square wave out, and we'll just have the sawtooth and the noise, low pass, high pass right now. Go ahead and draw in a note again. So now we have kind of a mix of the high harmonics of the sawtooth, and the low harmonics of the noise. If I was to raise my cutoff frequency, We'd have a high pass filter, the high channel, filtering out the sawtooth wave, while we're also raising the cutoff on a low pass filter, the low channel, for the noise. Maybe try the uh, nice bassy square wave in that high channel instead. Of resonance. Now, 
right now I have quite a bit of spread between the cutoff for the low pass filter and the high pass filter. I can reduce that spread and bring that crossover point much closer. Or really push them far apart. I know some of you are already saying, hey, try it the other way around. All right, let's try it the other way around. So that's a trick you can play around with spectral crossfading or spectral mixing of different input sources. I normally use a Steiner type filter, which has multiple inputs to one filter to create that sort of effect. This is actually giving me three independent filter chains. It's gonna give me a cleaner signal throughout, and a lot more control with this spread between the low and high frequencies. That's a lot of fun. Now, the other thing that this filter has is multiple outputs. To exploit that, let's take another quick break while I change the patch. Okay, I've changed the patch one more time because now we're gonna use the three sisters to create some pseudo stereo effects by exploiting its multiple outputs. I've patched Fairly simple little voice on the Moog Mother 32. Going right now just to my output module. The left channel is normal to the right. Let's go ahead and set up a little arpeggio. Let's do this. And now let's go ahead and route that audio signal from the mother through the three sisters. I'm gonna go into the all input. So I'm feeding all three filter chains. And let's go ahead and decide where we're gonna take our output from. For example, if we take it from the all, which is going through the blue channel of data right now, you're hearing a filtered version of that Moog arpeggio. I'm in crossover mode right now, a little bit of resonance. As I sweep around the cutoff, I get sort of a phase shifter effect. We played with this a little bit earlier, but if I choose a specific output, I'm only gonna get that particular filter output. Low. High. And center. Now let's say we used the center filter just for our center channel here. And just for fun, let's patch up these individual outputs to different channels on our output mixer. I can go ahead and use this second set of level controls on this particular module, that being nerding out, to go to the left channel. Right now it's centered by default because it's normalized. I take the low and put it in the right channel. Now you hear I have a pseudo stereo effect. We've got the low pass happening off the right channel. We've got the high pass happening off the left channel and center happening in the center channel. So I start to sweep these, you really hear things move. I can play around with the width of that center control. Create a nice fat center. And then just play on the edges. Or fairly narrow center band and push all the action out to the left and right channels. And let's go ahead and automatically modulate that. I have a nice LFO here going to the um, cutoff input. Bring up my antenna inverter. And just for fun, let's go ahead and also modulate the width control here. And I'm going to attenuate that. There is an antenna inverter for the cutoff frequency, but there is not one for the other CV controls. Go to my red channel here, take that out and run that off to my span control. Now I have quite a swimming output. I can go ahead and play around with different configurations of which channel goes to which left, right, or center on my output module. Now that's crossover mode where we have a low pass filter, a variable with band pass filter, and a high pass filter but also we have the format mode where there's three bandpass filters, and that's a different effect. 
They're much more narrow and more tuned. You don't get full bandwidth signal going through. Unless, of course, I start going counterclockwise here to mix in the anti-filter. When we have three resonant peaks going around, have quite a bit of motion going on. Let's reduce how deeply I'm modulating the span. Maybe a little bit more release. So it's another use for the Three Sisters filter is to create these pseudo stereo effects by using the different outputs and routing them individually to different channels or maybe a different processing. You might want to take the center channel and put it through a wave folder, for example, or take the low pass and put it through a clipping circuit or anything you like to go ahead and get more character out of a single VCO voice. So to summarize, Three Sisters is a set of three filter chains. Each filter chain contains two two-pole, multi-mode, high-pass, band-pass, low-pass output, state variable filters, state variables, nice classic sound, kind of like that Oberheim SEM sort of sound. They can be configured as three different band-pass filters, two poles on the uh, rise and fall, fairly sharp band-pass, very nice, or in crossover mode as a low-pass, a high-pass, and a variable with band-pass filter. And you can also do spectral mixing with the different inputs, and pseudo stereo effects on the output. There's a lot of power in this module. Just remember, have a little bit of an attenuation handy. Here I have the volume control on my Moog. I have additional attenuverters inside this particular modular. So I can go ahead and back off the input level if I hear it clipping, back off the output level if I hear it clipping something downstream, and also attenuate some of the control voltages coming into it. Once you do that, you're golden. And this is just one heck of a flexible filter.